Hey, welcome back. This is going to be uh, part two or episode two or however you want to read that in of uh, setting up your first planted aquarium. Finally did uh, get some time to get around to doing this. Sorry for the delay. Been very busy lately. But uh, let's get into it. Uh, in this episode I want to go over uh, substrates and fertilization. Um, unlike a fish only tank, plants do require a little bit more uh, attention be, being paid to uh, what kind of substrate material you use in your tank. Um, you can grow very basic, simple, uh, low light plants in just uh, gravel or sand. Uh, it has been done, been done successfully. Uh, but if you want to get into anything a little more uh, upscale or more sophisticated, a little harder to grow plants and stuff, you're definitely going to need something more than just gravel or sand. Um, sand can be part of it, but you need something that has some nutrients in its base. Uh, there's quite a few options out there. Uh, obviously, you got the you got your gravel and sand to start with as a uh, as a substrate, uh, which, like I said, that'll work fine for the simple plants. But if you want, and you're thinking about doing more sophisticated plants in the future, you might as well go ahead and take the extra step, spend the extra dollar, and uh, do what needs to be done so that you're already set up for it. Um, cheapest route is to stay with the gravel and sand but add a dirt base. Now uh, there's a lot of videos on the internet uh, Dustin's Fish Tanks being one of the big YouTube channels out there that uh, professes the uh, wonders of dirt in a planted tank and uh, as a matter of fact uh, he was the one that got me involved in doing the dirt in this particular tank you're looking at right now. It does have a dirt base to it. Um, using dirt, uh, you don't want to just go out in your backyard and dig up a bunch of dirt out of the backyard. You do want to pick up some uh, soil, potting soil, from your local Lowe's, Home Depot, hardware store, uh, garden center, whatever. Um, the one that is mostly recommended is miracle Grow Organic Potting Soil. Uh, you can use some of the off-brand organic potting soils, but you want to make sure that it is organic and that it does not have any additives uh, such as extra fertilizers or, or uh, the moisture pellets or any of that stuff. You don't need any of the extra stuff. You just need the organic dirt. You don't want any man-made stuff added to it. So make sure to check your bags if you don't go with the miracle Grow, and you go with one of the off-brands. Make sure that there isn't anything else added in there that shouldn't be there. Could harm your fish, could uh, kill your fish. So you do want to make sure that it is what you, what you want when you buy this. Um, generally, uh, the rule of thumb is there's two different ways to go with the dirt. There's mineralizing it, and then there's just putting it straight in. Um, the ease or the, the the low tech or easiest version is just to buy it, uh, pick out some of the bigger. There will be some like little wood chips and stuff in it. Try to pick pick out as many of those as you can, bigger chunks of wood or anything like that that can still break down, and uh, just pour it in the bottom, the base level, which is your lowest level of the tank here, at the very bottom. That's the first thing you're going to add. Uh, you want to smooth it out. Uh, I would say no more than an inch to an inch and a half thick. Inch and a half at tops. I wouldn't add any more than an inch and a half. Uh, you may be able to get away with higher uh, values of that, but I don't recommend it. Um, I can only tell you what's worked for me, and, and I, I haven't had a problem with it. And I would recommend an inch, which is what a lot of the people on the internet are recommending and it seems to work just fine so you know if it isn't broken don't fix it. Um, so put about an inch layer in there and then you want to cap it with either your gravel or your sand. Um, 
the next level up of using the dirt would be to uh, sift it and that would be where you would get a uh, uh, like a screen like uh, oh something like what you uh, you drain your pasta in uh, when you're making spaghetti or uh, something to that effect or even just pick up some wire screen that you would put in a window frame or a, or a screen door and uh, make a little frame out of it with a dip in the middle and just sift out the more fine particles of it and get rid of all the chunky stuff inside of it. Uh, if you know if that's the route you want to go, uh, the advantage to that is you're getting rid of a lot of the chunks of wood, even the smaller chunks, that are still organic and can break down over a period of time and possibly cause problems in your substrate. Uh, when you leave that wood in there after you put your gravel or sand on top of it, as it slowly breaks down, as it gets wet and slowly breaks down, it can cause pockets of hydrogen sulfide, which is a gas that can be dangerous to your fish, especially if you get a good sized pocket of it and it finally breaks loose and bubbles up to the top and the fish are there, it can gas your fish. So that is one, uh, one thing to be concerned with. So if you're, you know, you got the time, great. Sift it out, you know, get the, get the finer version of the dirt, make sure you get all the rocks or foreign material out of there and that it's just straight dirt. And then once again, you want maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch base. Okay, uh, once you get the dirt in there, I would recommend wetting it down. You don't want to get it into a mud pie type stuff, but you want to get it soppy. You don't want the water to show on the top of the dirt, but you definitely want it to be wet. Okay, after you have achieved that, then you want to go in with your sand or gravel on top of it. Um, I would recommend no less, no less than three quarters of an inch of a cap on top. You do want to keep that dirt contained underneath the gravel. You want the roots of the plants to go down to the dirt and the dirt to be down there for them. If you put less of a cap on it, what will happen is if you go to move plants, if you, as you uproot them, you will pull half the dirt with them and the dirt will get all over the surface of the substrate and release a lot of uh, organics into the water and then you can have algae blooms and, and uh, it's just a mess. It's just not worth dealing with. So you want at least a three quarter of an inch cap on top. Uh, I usually go with an inch or better. Um, in overall depth of the substrate, uh, oh, you know, there's a lot of new uh, aquascaping videos out there where they have these mounds of dirt and uh, they're sometimes four and five inches deep. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that's working out. I'm kind of old school. In the old school version, uh, you shouldn't go more than about two, maybe possibly no more than two and a half inches in depth of the substrate. Uh, right now, my, I'm pushing my luck. I've got about uh, approximately two and three quarter inches of substrate in there, and that wasn't planned. That just happened to be the way it worked out. Uh, so far, I've gotten away with it. Uh, I do, from time to time, take a uh, hanger that I bent straight and take and poke into the substrate all the way down to the bottom around uh, in different spots of the tank just to make sure that if there is any hydrogen sulfide gas trapped in it that it can release and not build up to toxic levels to where it can kill the fish. So far I haven't had a problem with it. Uh, I'm still crossing my fingers on that one, but the tank has been up for almost a year now and I think at this point I've I, I dodged the bullet, shall we say. Okay, so we've got the dirt and gravel or sand version. Okay. Oh, and uh, final note, the third way of do working with the dirt is to mineralize it, which is where you sift it, and then you lay it out on a, uh, uh, on a uh, piece of plastic or whatever in the sun and let it bake for a, for a couple of days, and then you wet it down, and then you uh, lay it back out on the mat, and then you let it bake for a couple of days, and you do this process for uh, a couple of weeks, and basically what that's supposed to do is break down any any organics that are in it uh, so that you don't have uh, a high organic value in your tank after you first set it up. Um, that is one of the problems with dirt. If you just put it in there or you just sift it, uh, 
when you set the tank up for the first month or two, your organics are going to be really, really high inside the tank. And you can't have a problem with algae. So uh, if you really want to go the extra mile, you buy the dirt, you sift the dirt, you lay it out, you wet it down, you dry it out, you wet it down, you dry it out. There's plenty of videos on the uh, internet. Just look for mineralizing mineralizing potting soil or whatever like that. There's ungodly amounts of articles on different ways to do that. Okay, so on to the next step. Uh, you can also go with a simpler version if you've got a little more money in your pocket and you want to spend it. Uh, there is uh, three different kinds of man-made substrate that you can go with which has some if not all of the things that you need without having to add dirt or any of that. Um, at the lower end of the scale you got Fluorite, uh, Floramax, uh, Fluval, and uh, actually Eco-Complete. Eco-Complete is kind of in the middle. So I'm going to say Fluorite, Fluval, uh, Fluval Stratum, and uh, the Floramax. Um, what it is, Fluorite is a uh, clay-based material. It has been baked, and what it does is it has a high CEC value, which means it kind of acts as a sponge. So when you put this in, you can either go straight with the fluorite, just fluorite, or you can mix it with gravel. And what it does is, is as you add chemical fertilizers to your tank after you've added this, it acts as a sponge and will soak up a lot of the chemicals uh, or the uh, the nutrients in the fertilizers and hold them and slowly release them back to the plants as the roots grow. Um, it's it, it's going to be next step up on this, uh, on your cost level. Uh, it's kind of an intermediate cost. Uh, I believe that fluorite and uh, Floramax and everything they go for around anywhere from ten to twenty dollars for a fifteen pound bag. Uh, for a 55 gallon, that amounts to, uh, I use three bags of uh, Floramax in here. <coughs> so, uh, I got it online, and I think I got it for, with shipping and everything, it was, it was less than $50. Uh, fluorite usually runs a little a couple dollars cheaper than the Floramax. Uh, difference between the Fluorite and the Floramax, Fluorite is made by Seachem, and it's basically just a clay-based type substance. Floramax is a clay-based substance with minerals and uh, different things mixed in with it. Okay, so it has a lot of the minerals that are required by your plants. So you're kind of you know stepping up one right there. Uh, I believe Fluval is the same way. Um, the one thing that all three of these are missing is they do not have any fertilizer value. They just have the minerals. Uh, the micro and the uh, macro, some uh, nutrients that the plants need. Okay. Um, stepping up next, which what I'd say the intermediate would be Eco Complete, and that usually runs around twenty-five to thirty something dollars a bag. So it's a little more expensive, but it has everything that the others have. Plus, it adds some of the fertilizers. And it also comes in a wet format, which has live bacteria in it, so it helps cut down on your cycling time of a new tank. Instead of it taking a month to cycle the tank, it uh, may cut it down to two or three weeks. So that's an added benefit to that. Uh, otherwise, it holds all the same things that the other ones do. It, it is a uh, basically a clay based with the minerals added and plus the bacteria and some fertilizer, uh, fertilized nitrogen values to it along with. Uh, finally you get to the top of the uh, heap there where you got your ADA soil and uh, uh, what's the other one? Aqua, it's out of China. Uh, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the top one. Uh, Mr. Aqua. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a Chinese version of ADA. ADA comes out of uh, no, that's uh, Amano. <laughs> uh, it comes out of Japan. Uh, that is costly. It costs you a lot of money, but 
you're guaranteed you're going to have lush growing plants. Uh, and uh, if you want to quick and easy and add it, add it to the tank and plant the plants and they just grow right off the bat, that's the way you want to go. But it is going to put a dent in your wallet. Uh, Mr. Aqua is just a little bit cheaper than the ADA. I'm not sure. The, the jury is still out on whether it's as good. I don't think it's quite as good, but I think for the difference in the cost, uh, if you want you know, a step in between the ADA and something like the uh, EcoComplete, uh, Mr. Aqua would probably be your best bet. So, basically, with all of these substrates, once again, I don't recommend over two and a, two and a quarter, two and three quarter inches of depth. Uh, uh, I, I have gotten away with it, but I'm not claiming that you know if you did it, you wouldn't have problems with it. Uh, and I'm not sure that I might not still have problems with it down the road somewhere. Um, I have seen in a lot of them, even the Amano uh, videos and stuff, where he does slope it up and put these, you know, very deep spots of, of substrate and uh, they do use some additives in there with specialized bacterias and, and that kind of thing, but uh, once again, that's kind of, you know, you're going to have to spend the extra money to be on the safe side or risk the possibility of the hydrogen sulfide building up in the substrate and causing problems. Okay, so I'm going to leave that with the substrate, and we're going to jump on over to fertilizers. Um, first off, with fertilizers, substrate, lighting, and all that stuff, there's a lot of people out on the internet that uh, profess balance. Balance. Balance is something you've got to have in a tank. Okay, um, I don't really like that terminology uh, to be, uh, it doesn't really define what it is in a tank that really keeps it, uh, quote, balanced. Uh, it's more of keeping up with and scheduling everything, everything to, to do things right, to make sure that you fertilize uh, a certain amount, and uh, every tank is going to be different. Uh, your plant load is going to be different, uh, the substrate is going to be different, your water chemistry is going to be different, and that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. Your water chemistry, uh, there's a lot of people you'll see on the internet that'll be from uh, the Midwest or uh, the North, and they'll have these gorgeous aquariums, and and they, they're they using EcoComplete as a substrate, and they grow these gorgeous plants, and they use they tell you what kind of fertilizers and how much they use. You have the same setup, and you're from the southeast where the water is extremely, extremely soft, or at least in most areas of the southeast, and uh, your plants don't grow as well. I have struggled with this because I live in the southeast. Um, there, in water chemistry, there is uh, a parameter known as uh, your uh, carbonate hardness, and there is. Uh, there's general hardness and carbonate hardness, and they have to do with the mineral content in the water, uh, the, the free-floating mineral content, uh, calcium, magnesium, uh, uh, boron, uh, all the different free-floating things in the water, okay? Uh, when you get up in the north and you get out into the Midwest, and especially around the Rockies, uh, water tends to be very hard. As a matter of fact, the better part of America, we have harder water. Um, even though that's not as good for South American uh, type fish like tetras and rummy nose and angelfish and discus uh, because they prefer a softer water. Uh, the problem is once you get rid of, if you do an RODI system and you demineralize all that, uh, which is the D, what the DI stands for on RO, it's reverse osmosis uh, deionization and you're, you're, you're taking all that uh, stuff out of it and then you add a few things back in. Uh, you can do that, but uh, that's also very costly. But the problem being is, with the harder water, it also has a lot of the things that the plants want and need to grow. Um, so being that I'm in the south, what I actually have to do is go out and get oyster shells and crushed coral and put them in small media bags and add them to my filter system in small amounts 
uh, to add some of those extra minerals and, and, and things into the water column so that the plants will have what they need. Um, but that's kind of part of fertilization, but that's a whole different topic, and I think I'll go over that in a different video. Um, so let's get back to fertilizing. Um, basic fertilizers, uh, you've got a couple of choices. Um, you could do a DIY version, uh, which there are, once again, also qu plenty of videos out there on YouTube and on the Internet with recipes on how to do DIY. Uh, there is the dry fertilization method, which is where you order bags of the actual components, uh, the uh, phosphate, uh, the nitrate, the uh, magnesium, the uh, potassium, the all the different components of what it what makes up uh, the fertilizer, and then you mix it yourself. Um, that is my pick. Personally, I think. Uh, cost-wise and controllability, I like that the best. If you are somebody who works a nine-to-five and has extra extra work outside, don't have time to fuss with that kind of thing, uh, you can go to the pre-mixed stuff that you can find in any of your local pit, uh, pet stores, uh, fish stores, whatever. Uh, you can even find it in Walmart. Uh, it's just a pre-mixed version. It's costly per ounce. Uh, as to you know usage wise it does cost a lot of money in, in, in a yearly or an over yearly type basis um, which is one of the other reasons I like the uh, dry ferts because it's much more cost effective um, but it, it'll work just fine for you um, uh, most of the uh, major uh, aquarium outfitters uh, Tetra uh, uh, API uh, Seachem, which I'll put a asterisk next to Seachem. They're one of the better ones. Um, uh, and there's uh, oh Brightwell. Uh, the, the, there, there's a never-ending list of different people. You can get on the internet or you can go to your local fish store. I'm sure they'll have something for you. Um, the uh, the advantage to those is the ease of you go, you buy it, uh, you figure out how many, you know, you, you say, okay, I got a 55 gallon tank, you figure minus out a couple of gallons for the substrate and the, the fish and the plants and stuff like that. So you round it down to 53 or 50 whatever gallons, and then you read the recipe or the, the dosage uh, meter on the, the bottle and you shake up the bottle, you pour it into a teaspoon or however much that you need or get a little uh, syringe and draw it out for however many milliliters you want to add. You squirt it in the aquarium, you're good to go. Um, a lot of the bottled stuff will give you two different versions of how to add. Uh, you can either add on a daily basis or a weekly basis. I do recommend doing the, if you have the time, because it only takes a couple minutes uh, to do it on a daily basis, I feel that you get a much more even flow of fertilizer for the plants um, or you can add just one big dose once a week when you do your water after you do your water changes I have found it works better at least for me it works better to do it on a daily basis um, weekly will work if you're really strapped and don't have time to fuss with it so much but I think it works better on a daily basis uh, dry ferts there's plenty of places out there that you can order them from uh, your local fish store probably could order them for you if you asked. Um, I haven't seen them in the local fish stores, but uh, I'm not saying that if you asked, they couldn't possibly get it for you. Uh, but there's plenty of places on the uh, internet, uh, Greenleaf Aquarium being one of them, uh, uh, Aquarium Plants something or other dot com, uh, which I believe is out of California. Uh, they, they sell them. Uh, usually costs about $30. For the whole package, and you get uh, about four or five different bags of chemicals. It's a uh, kind of looks like salt. <laughs> it's a salt grain type material. Um, it's best to go out and get a, a, a small jeweler's scale, like uh, something that will read grams, and I mean small versions of grams, like 30 grams and 20 grams and seven grams, that kind of thing, because the best way to measure out the uh, different amounts to add to your container is to scale it. <coughs> but, 
some of them do offer where you know a teaspoon of this or a half a teaspoon of that or whatever you can do it that way it's just not quite as accurate uh, the other good thing about having them, them separated into their own components is uh, if you're in an area like mine where you do have the soft water and uh, you notice that uh, like the leaves on your plants, your stem plants, start getting little holes in them, you know that the, you, you've got a potassium problem. So instead of dosing the whole overall fertilizer with extra stuff to get the potassium levels up, you can just add a little more potassium out of that one component into the tank to supplement it. And then when you go to do your mixture next time, you just add a little more potassium to the, to the recipe. And that way, you know, you've kind of uh, worked it out to your particular water chemistry. That's the reason I like the uh, dry ferns. The DIYs, like I say, there's a lot of recipes out there for them. Most of them are for root, uh, the root tab type things, uh, which is where you go out and you uh, order some gel caps. Uh, I guess you can get them locally, maybe from uh, drug stores or something, but you can also order them on the internet much cheaper. You get these little gel caps, empty gel caps, and then you go out and the one that I've heard the most is Osmocote Plus, which you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot or online. Uh, it's a pelletized, uh, slow-release fertilizer. Uh, they're little pellets, maybe the size of BBs, uh, maybe a little smaller than that or whatever, and you take the gel caps, you scoop up uh, a little gel cap full of these things, and you cap it off on the other end, and then you take some... Uh, tweezers and you stick it down in the substrate down around your plants every so many inches or whatever and it slowly breaks down and releases its fertilizer to the roots of the plants. Um, and there are some other versions where you take and put it in a clay type substance and let it dry and then just stick those those down in there. Um, most important elements that I have found and this is just me personally and, well, I've also noticed that most people talk about this as far as the uh, fertilizer components are uh, phosphor or uh, uh, potassium, I'm sorry, potassium being one that is very important, uh, iron being very important. Now, iron doesn't normally come with the uh, standard kits that you order online, the powder type stuff. Uh, and a lot of the times they have it in very low values in the uh, the uh, pre-mixed type stuff. Now, uh, I know Seachem uh, for sure does have a bottle of, it's pre-mixed, it's just iron supplement that you can buy separately. Uh, I would recommend that if that's the route you take. Uh, if you go with the dry ferts, I would recommend you getting the uh, extra iron bag to mix up your own iron. Uh, I, I have found it to be very, very important. Uh, to plants. Uh, it may just be my area and maybe we're just very iron deficient in this area and that's why it's so important for my water chemistry but uh, I have also heard quite a few other aquarists and, and hobbyists talk about iron being pretty important. So potassium and iron are two that you definitely want to make sure that you have on hand. Uh, nitrogen uh, that is basically an organic uh, a lot of the nitrogen uh, through your fish's poop and the food, extra food that isn't eaten or whatever, as it breaks down and stuff releases a lot of that nitrogen value. And through the uh, process of, of uh, your beneficial bacteria breaking down the, uh, the organics and stuff will also release nitrogen for your plants to, to go. So that isn't on the top of my list of most importance as far as fertilizers. Um, Macronutrients, uh, sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. just kind of depends on your water chemistry. Uh, I would get them as a, as, as a good note just to have them on hand, but uh, you can kind of test trial that and figure out whether you really need them or not. Um, finding uh, what I was discussing at the first part of this is with the balance or scheduling and all that kind of thing is, is really what it breaks down to being is uh, you're looking at this tank with this amount of plants in it, and I know how much fertilizer to add daily for this kind of plant load and with this fish load. Now, if I was to go in there and pull out all of this uh, Limnophilia aquatica and 
uh, all of the Sunset High Grow here and all of the the uh, Rotella back in the, in, the, in the corner there and everything like that and then just put some smaller plants in its place. Uh, that would cut down on a lot of the plant load, the uptake of the fertilizers and stuff. Um, if I continued to dose like I am dosing now, I would probably end up with an algae break breakout. It would probably you know become overcome with algae. So I guess you could call it kind of a balance, but it's really kind of finding finding the right amounts of uh, a fertilizer and the right length of time to run your lights and the right distance and well we'll get into the lighting into the next episode but uh, there, there, there's a lot involved in that but uh, I guess you could call it balance I just don't like to use that as a terminology uh, it's just finding the right combination that works for you with your water chemistry with your plant load with your fish load and what system you have and that will change so you know once you find quote a balance that doesn't mean that you can just stick to that schedule the whole time it's going to change you will have plants that will die you will have fish that will die you will add new fish you will change plants out uh, so with all of those changes it's going to change the amount of fertilizers and chemicals that you will be adding to the tank so keep that in mind when getting into this um, I think that's about it. Looking at my list here, yeah, I, I think I've covered about what I want to touch on here. Um, I do recommend, like I say, this is just an opinion. This is my opinion. This is what I've learned that it works for me. Uh, some of this is uh, is not just from my own experience. It comes from a lot of knowledgeable people out there and from a couple of books. Yes, I do still do the old school book thing every once in a while and I even subscribe to a magazine and yes I have the online online version of it but uh, I prefer the actual paper version where I could sit out on the back porch and just chill out and, and uh, look at the pretty colorful pictures at any rate uh, I'm giving you what has worked for me uh, no guarantees it will work for you. Uh, it's just a good starting point, something to something to start with, something to, to get going with. Uh, there are plenty of other, other opinions out there uh, in YouTube land and on the Internet. Um, I hope this is helpful to some of you. And uh, I will be back for Part 3 or Episode 3, however you want to put it which I will cover the uh, plants themselves, what kind of plants do you want, which ones are the easy ones, which ones are the hard ones, and uh, lighting. And that's a big one. The lighting is a big one. So uh, I hope to get that out in the next week or two. So be looking for that. And once again, thank you very much for watching. And I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. We'll see you soon.